That brings me to the subject of wind and solar, because they are often put forward as a solution. Wind and solar, regardless of the cost, both of, in both cases they are very high. In terms of solar, I don't believe it actually has any place on the grid at between 25 and 50 cents a kilowatt hour. It's just priced right out of the market, and money spent on solar could be better spent on other technologies that are more effective. But nonetheless, despite the cost problem, both of them are inherently intermittent in nature as they are applied today. We cannot run our hospitals and schools and factories on power sources that disappear for three or four days at a time. That's simply not acceptable. Every wind farm that is built has to be backed up with some form of reliable power. The only three technologies we have at the present time that produce continuous baseload power are fossil fuels, mostly coal and gas, hydroelectric, which produces 6% of the U.S. power, and nuclear energy. So every time you put in a wind farm or a solar farm, you have to build something to back it up, and that has to be nuclear, fossil, or hydro. The issue in the United States is that the hydro is all built out. There is no big capacity left for increasing hydro, whereas other countries like Canada and Brazil and China do have significant amounts of hydro potential and that's what should be built. In the United States, the choice is clear. It is between fossil fuels and nuclear energy. And as an environmentalist, I choose nuclear. Even though it has issues, they are nowhere near as significant as the greenhouse gas and, and air pollution issues associated with fossil fuels. We tend to think the United States is normal if we live here, but it's 70% fossil fuel in its electricity production. That's one of the main reasons there's 20 tons of CO2 emitted per capita in the United States, among the highest in the world, along with Australia, which is nearly 100% coal-fired electricity. Sweden has 8 tons of CO2 emissions per capita, close to a third of the U.S. Why? 50% hydro and 50% nuclear no fossil fuels are used to generate electricity. France is second to Sweden in Europe as the lowest CO2 per capita emitter, 80% nuclear, 10% hydro, and only 10% fossil fuels. Look around the world at the technologies that are being used to generate electricity, and you will find the countries that have the most hydro and nuclear are the ones that produce the least greenhouse gas per capita. You'd think Denmark would be low because of all its wind energy. They poured billions into wind farms. Indeed, 18% of Denmark's electricity is coming from wind. They're blessed with having oceans on three sides and a lot of wind up there. Yet the other 82% is all from fossil fuels. Because it's flat, they have no hydro, and they're anti-nuclear, so they have no nuclear. Denmark is among the highest per capita CO2 emissions in Western Europe as a result. So if you're looking for examples, don't look to Germany, don't look to Denmark, Look to Sweden and France if you want to see where there is actually an achievement of greenhouse gas emissions reduction due to technology that is being used for electricity. An article in USA Today points out clearly, in today's USA Today, I see that NRDC and the, uh, at Edison Electric Institute and many other organizations were involved in this study, shows that it doesn't make much sense to plug electric cars into coal-fired power plants because it will actually increase the number of emissions, including CO2. It only makes sense to go to electric cars, which is a great idea to get them off fossil fuels, if the electric grid <coughs> is made by clean technology. And that means moving away from fossil fuels towards nuclear and renewables where the renewables can actually work effectively. There's also another article in there about how we've built so much wind in some parts of the west and south that there aren't enough transmission lines now to carry it. This is another additional cost that maybe wasn't taken into account in the beginning. But a mixture of nuclear and wind is the way to go if we are going to ever change the ratio of the technologies that are producing our electricity in this country. From 70% fossil, 10% nuclear, 6% hydro, we've got to start moving that in the other direction so that the nuclear part is bigger than the fossil fuel part 
as it is already in some other countries. So, personally, as an environmentalist, I just cannot see the reason for continued zero-tolerance position on nuclear power. Organizations whose position is that all the nuclear plants in the world should be shut down and that no more should be built are basically arguing for a huge increase in fossil fuel consumption and emissions. The arithmetic is clear on that. And it is most ironic, in conclusion, that my old colleagues in the environmental movement are actually the main impediment to reducing fossil fuel consumption and CO2 emissions because they are opposed to the practical solutions which include nuclear energy, hydroelectric dams, intensive forest management to pull carbon out of the atmosphere, genetic modification to make trees that grow twice as fast and pull even more carbon out, and then use the wood as a substitute for concrete, steel, and plastic, reducing the amount of CO2 emissions coming from the manufacture of those non-renewable materials. All of those things find opposition within the environmental movement today. It's time they change their position on these subjects in order to bring their energy policy in line with their climate change policy. Germany, for example, says it's going to phase out 30% of its electricity that is produced by nuclear power. At the same time, they say they're going to reduce their CO2 emissions by 20%. These two policies are mutually impossible. Their only alternative, if they phase out 30% of their nuclear power, of their power made by nuclear, is brown coal from Germany or gas from Russia, both of which would dramatically increase their CO2 emissions. So we have to bring energy policy and climate change policy into logical consistency. And that means nuclear energy has to be a big part of the solution.